Hey, what's going on my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to share with you an energy update for the entire month of December 2023, the final month of the year. And the energy we have this month is very appropriate for what you would expect for the month of December. It's a time of kind of winding down from the year, but I would say more so than just that. There is actually a lot more going on, as you can see, within December beyond that. But that will serve as kind of the foundation. So this month, you might find that things aren't moving as quickly as you like. You might feel a bit stuck. You might be in the process of trying to gain clarity about certain important things in your life. And, and then you're not having any luck with that. Maybe you do. Maybe you think you figured something out. And then you find the very next day you, you changed your mind completely and you just feel kind of like, uh, it reminds me of being in a float tank. Not sure if you've tried that, but a sensory deprivation tank is kind of a unique thing. It's like this pod that's filled with about nine inches of water that's heated to your exact body temperature and filled with about a thousand pounds of Epsom salt. And these pods are light proof and soundproof. So essentially, when you're in one of these pods, you feel like you're just floating through space. And initially, when you're in one of these pods, your mind, because it's so used to attaching to sensory input, it struggles, it fights, it kind of desperately seeks something to grasp, something to anchor itself to, but there's nothing. You feel like you're floating through space. There's nothing. You're in this big void where nothing's happening and it's uncomfortable. So you might feel a little bit like that. You might feel a little bit restless, like, like I really got to get things figured out right now, but I can't because you're just sort of stagnant. But what happens after a little while, once you kind of give in to this experience of the sensory deprivation tank, is you relax and you're able to access higher levels of consciousness. You're able to experience deep healing because you're able to see more of yourself, see more of the moment because you're not so distracted by your typically myopic perspective on life. It's become expanded. And though it's unfamiliar, though it's uncomfortable, though it does require some, some winding down to access this state of not doing anything, there's a lot of profound benefits that can happen. And so too with December. December can be a month for you of massive healing, profound breakthrough, moving into a completely new direction on a very macrocosmic level, not a new chapter in your life, a new lifetime, a new timeline, a brand new soul theme. There's a lot going on and a lot of potential in this void space you might find yourself in right now. And this reading, this energy reading is going to go over the three main themes I'm feeling myself and also noticing within all my coaching clients. And at the end, I'll share a tip to kind of help you get the most out of this powerful energy. And I welcome you to the video and I'll see you inside. So theme number one, new soul theme. What I mean by that is something that I learned from a guy named Bashar. He's actually a channeler. Maybe you've heard of him. And he talks about the time on the planet right now is very unique because whereas normally in the past, humans, souls would incarnate on earth, take this for what you will, they'd incarnate on earth and they'd pretty much play out one major theme, one major soul theme, and then they would die and they'd go back and they'd come back and do another theme. Well, as you probably know, if you're watching a video like this, we're living in a very interesting time, a time of massive acceleration on all levels, vibrationally. And in our lifetimes, we get to experience sometimes multiple major soul themes that again would have previously been isolated to just one lifetime. But it's a new thing for us and it's kind of unfamiliar, these transitional periods. And that's what I believe December really represents. It's like a transition. It's a time where, yeah, not much is going on. Yeah, you might feel restless. Yeah, you might feel like you really wanna figure things out, but you can't. And you just sense it's time to like do nothing. And that makes you feel uncomfortable because you're so used to doing stuff. Um, but, but within that, you have this opportunity to experience like a deeper level of, of contemplation. You know, most people's lives are so racy, so busy, always doing, always. We have more sensory data input in one day 
one day with our phones and everything than we probably had for, you know, in a hundred years ago that we probably experienced in a year in one day, we're overloaded, overstimulated. We need these downtimes to review who we are, who we become. Are we happy? Am I happy with where my life is right now? The way I'm spending my days, the way I'm relating with my, the loved ones in my life. How are your relationships? How are your finances? Do, are you living where you want to live? Are you living the life you imagine for yourself? If so, fantastic. If not, fantastic. Cause now you get to really think critically about where you want to put your time and energy into going forward. And it's so bizarre. It reminds me of when I closed down my personal training gym a long time ago when I had this soul calling to get onto YouTube. And I know a lot of you have heard the story a million times, so I'll, I'll be brief. <laughs> but basically, I was a personal trainer and I identified my identity at that time was that of a fitness trainer, that of Victor, the fitness guy. That is all I knew my entire life. Since I was 13, 14 years old, I was working out and training people in my basement, even my friends. And I got to this point in life where I was going through this type of review where it's like, okay, you've played out this theme long enough. You're no longer satisfied being a trainer. It's no longer even working. Life is no longer seeming to support your, your gym and your, and your lifestyle. It's time to move on. But where, where do I go? I had some faint ideas as might you, but nothing solid, nothing solid to go on. Nothing solid enough to justify making a drastic shift in my life. It seems so up in the air, everything. And yet this identity of being a trainer, being the fitness guy was slowly dying, increasingly becoming not a fit. But who was I to become? I didn't know. Well, as time passed, I became what you see now, a, a YouTube guy who talks about spiritual awakening. And I'm very happy. It's, it's, it's very different. I would have never guessed. I would never... I would have never predicted this ever. <laughs> um, however, it's a, it definitely feels like an expanded version of myself. I've been able to discover and pull from and express aspects of Victor, myself, my soul that I wasn't even aware was there. And that's the outcome of this type of new soul theme I'm referring to. Maybe you've explored this particular theme in your life long enough, and maybe it's time to start a new one. And it's okay if you don't know what that new one is yet. Emphasizing the word yet. And these downtimes are also good because it's an opportunity to go deep within yourself, to experience profound healing. And you might feel this whether you like it or not. Maybe there's some blocks, some unconsciousness you need to kind of dissolve before moving on to the next soul theme. In fact, that happens a lot on even kind of a, 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 I would say a microcosmic level within a person's awakening journey. And it reminds me of a book I read long ago called The End of Your World by Adashanti. Adashanti is a real well-known spiritual teacher. And there's this chapter in there called, I got it, I lost it. So you might feel that. You might feel like you're on track. You're moving towards something cool, even though it's unknown. And then your old habits creep up or you feel deep, pain or grief or shame or unworthiness or insecurity or doubt or fear coming up in a big way, making this new path you're on or at least exploring seem very, you know, where you're not all that hopeful because there's this stuff you're carrying in the way and now it's being thrust in your face. It's, you're being pinged left and right by life. You're going to bed thinking about these things, these these deeper wounds that apparently it's time to heal. And, and it is time to heal. It's not, if, if you're going through this, not everybody will, but it is oftentimes kind of like a, a breakthrough and a transformation must happen before you really get to fully step in to this new theme of yours. And if that's you, I encourage you to not do what I did, which was to judge myself, to feel shame, to feel like I was doing it wrong. To feel like I lost it, as Adashante said, I got it, I lost it. I thought I lost it. There were times I would feel really connected, really clear, really hopeful, and just really good. And then all of a sudden, I would find, I would sort of watch myself being taken over by old conditioning, old habits that 
had a very negative result, whether it was through addiction or bad habits or something like that. I would literally watch myself get dragged down into, the, into my pits, into my misery, fully aware that it was unconsciousness playing out, fully aware sometimes even of the connections of where it comes from, why it's happening, but unable to stop it because there was such a momentum. This is, I got it, I lost it. As Adashanti goes to say, you didn't lose anything. It's, it's part of the zigzag trajectory of your awakening. And it looks kind of like this. You're going up. And sometimes we need to go back down to have another growth spurt. And going down, relapsing, is part of the growth spurt. It's like a trampoline. You, you, you press it down and you bounce back up. It's no different. So the most important thing is that if you're going through this, you can, you can yield to it. Just, just go into it. Don't think you're doing anything wrong. In fact, the people I've met that never do, never have anything come up for them, in my opinion, if we were to judge or label, they're the ones doing it wrong because they're the ones so that have done such a good job of locking up all of their trauma, all of their pain into a little box that they can't even find anymore. They've lost it. They're holding on and they don't even know why. They don't even know they're holding on. They don't even know that they're living completely unconsciously, driven by their pain body, as Eckhart Tolle would say. It reminds me of when I used to run retreats. I would sometimes do this little demonstration where I would invite all the guests to hold on to a pen. And I'd say, hold on to that pen really tight, really tightly. And I'd say, grip it tighter, tighter. Okay, you got it? Good. And then, I, and then I'd go on and I would sort of distract them by telling a long story. And my intention was the fact that what I knew what would happen is I knew they'd forget about that pen. They'd forget that they were holding on to the pen. And I'd say, hey, everybody, remember that pen? And it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> funny. They forgot they were holding on. Most people forgot they were holding on. Not you. You see the pen. And what you might be dealing with is the next part of the demonstration, which is even when you become aware that you're holding on to something, and you, but you've been gripping it so long, it's sometimes hard. Your, your hand cramps up. Your body wants to hold on to that. So even though you're aware, it can be very difficult to open up your hand. And we need time. We need space. We need the exact energy of December to be able to just be, to, able, to be able to just sit with ourselves long enough to loosen up our grip and let go of whatever's holding us down and preventing us from moving on to the next step. It's not that we're doing anything wrong. It's literally a sign of, it's a sign of progress. It's part of progress, part of the same, it's half of the same coin. There's no reason to beat yourself up if you've been eating more junk food than normal or drinking more alcohol than you would prefer or maybe you had a great thing going at the local yoga, yoga studio and you, you, that's, you haven't gone in a couple weeks. There's no reason to beat yourself up. There, in fact, it's, a, it's a, not a call for celebration necessarily, but it's, it's something to look at. Why is this happening? There's probably an opportunity here. There's probably a wound up at the surface ripe for healing temporarily so that it can get your attention playing out in this way of, of what seems like like a regression in your lifestyle or habits or something like that. Those are, that's just a clue to what is going on underneath the surface. So you can use it. Use this energy and lean into whatever's coming up and know that it's a, it's a time of breakthrough. In this space, you can have profound healing and profound breakthroughs that will literally change your life. In fact, I talked about this yesterday. I was doing this, a, a different slide of this Yesterday, I was uh, training my coaches. I, I train, one of the things I do, my friends and I, we, we train spiritual coaches and we're running this certification program right now. And one of the things I was sharing with them just yesterday was my, like my transformation philosophy, something I've learned in working with literally hundreds, if not thousands of people over the past decade. And what I was explaining is that there's different levels of transformation. On one level, it's awareness. I'm aware that what I'm doing stems from early childhood. Oh, I'm aware of that. I can see the connections very clearly on an intellectual level. And then I explained that when I'm a coach, what I like to do is take people beneath that into the realm of healing, 
into where there are actual feelings involved, actual uh, catharsis, crying, yelling, vibrating, energy coming up and leaving your system. Because when you experience profound, deep healing, that is permanent. That will have this crazy ripple effect into all areas of your life. It's one thing to be aware of why you're doing something, but if the energetic and the emotional momentum is too great, even that awareness isn't enough for most people to break the habits. And that really sucks because then you're witnessing yourself acting out of alignment, but you can't do anything about it. But when you experience this deep healing, it removes the chains that bind you to that pattern and you get to experience permanent change, lasting change. Freedom, freedom from your past, freedom from those feelings, freedom from the bondage that has kept you down this entire time. That is an opportunity in December, my friend. And uh, thirdly, enhanced psychic senses. From this contemplative state, you might find, whether you sit and meditate formally or not, you might find that in addition to being more open to like the underworld, you could say, of your shadow, simultaneously, you're also more open to the spirit world. And that can unfold in a myriad of different ways. I've been having these cool like, like uh, ET extraterrestrial dreams as of lately. And that's kind of what sparked this entire, um, this, this entire reading, actually. I had a dream with uh, Bashar. Bashar, as I mentioned, he's a, he's a, Someone I've been following pretty much my entire awakening journey, most of it anyway. And sometimes Bashar will come into my dreams. Not literally. I don't think so literally. But as sort of a metaphor for a, a, a part of myself, part of my psyche that's kind of counseling myself. And in his dream, Bashar, me, was saying, you've explored, and for me, was the theme of success. For the last like 10 years, I've been building businesses, building up my life, building up my living situation. And I got it to where I want it. I got it beyond where I want it. And Bashar was saying, you're done. You're kind of, you're, you're done. You're, you have this opportunity now to move on to this next phase, which for me, it's like, he said, I forgot the word he used, but it was like giving, not, not charity, but something along the lines of like, like, like more like freely sharing in a way without trying to like build and capitalize on my efforts as much because I kind of have what I need. And the dream came in a, a very synchronistic timing for me because it's exactly what I've been sort of wrestling with. I've been getting kind of burnt out with some of like the aspects of my business that I don't think are even necessary anymore. Anyway, the point is I had this crazy ass dream about an ET that gave me guidance and it was profound and very helpful and illuminating for me in a big way. Now you can be completely different. Maybe your deceased grandmother speaks to your best friend in a conversation you have three weeks from now. And it just, you can tell what they said was grandma talking to you. And you just have this weird awareness that grandma just spoke through Johnny over the telephone. Johnny didn't know it, but I, I felt it. I was, I was more open so I could tell. The spirits, the spirit world can speak to you in, in, in countless ways through synchronicity. You might have more synchronicity, seeing more of the repetitive numbers, more little mini ironies so frequently that you can't help but scratch your head and wonder like, what the hell, what did I just take? What, what drug am I on? Is life really this fluid, this synchronistic, this magical? For you, it might just be th through your dreams. W whatever, be, be open. Because we don't ever go down into the underworld alone, unprotected, unassisted, not guided. Just know that. Know that you're safe to go into whatever you need to go into to get to that next level because you are also very much supported by the many aspects of your divine nature and the divine reality in which we all live. And finally, leading me to my tip of the month, the four-letter word, it's a good word, it's trust. When things aren't moving forward and we feel uncertain and stuff is coming up, it's very easy to assume that life is going to always be this way. We can sometimes get so deep into our shadow realm, into our shadow side, into our pain body, that we almost forget that 
life isn't always like this. We forget what it's like to be connected and inspired and taking action and experiencing success. We forget because we're so immersed in the past, so immersed in our pain. It's also a, big, a bizarre thing I kind of glossed over briefly if you're truly contemplating moving into a new soul theme, which might mean for you a new living location, a new relationship, a new career. It's not that you're just, not just a logistical nightmare that this kind of imposes, but sometimes the identity shift required. It's, it's big stuff. And it can, it, it's very ungrounding, very, you feel just uprooted and like, like a leaf blowing around in the wind. But there's a method to this wind. The wind is not random. It's the winds of change, the winds of the divine blowing you to a new height. And you can make the choice to not try to fight it. When you try to fight it, that's when you suffer. Just like in that flotation tank. If you just sit there and try to like, you know, hear something or see something or, or find some type of certainty, you're going to drive yourself freaking nuts. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to fight. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to figure it out. All you have to do is let go. But in order to actually let go, you need to trust. You need to trust that when you jump off that mountain, there's a parachute on your back, even though you can't see it or feel it. It's there and it will open up. And when you choose to trust, you start to finally see the parachute. Holy cow. You start to see the miracles happening in your life. You start to see just how supported and guided you are. This happened to me the other, not the other day, but like a month ago, I was in Costa Rica. And we, it was after this ayahuasca retreat that we were participating in. And on the last day, we always like to drink wachuma, which is a, a cactus, a San Pedro medicine, kind of like peyote, if you don't know what any of that is. And anyway, I, we, you know, four or five hours into it, I found myself compelled to go into this pool. And it's this beautiful infinity pool in like the mountains in Osara, Costa Rica. And I like to go to the very corner, the very edge of the property where it just feels like you're almost like, a, like that movie Titanic. You're kind of like, like this, but you're looking off into this, these, these rolling green mountains with eagles soaring and birds chirping and monkeys growling. It's like this amazing, breathtaking, just expression of, of nature, you could say. And I was sitting out there at the corner, kind of looking off, just, just taking it all in. And I heard the word in my head very clearly. It was supported. I felt this like knowingness that oh, my entire life, our entire life, we have been supported in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. And I really started to kind of ground that in. And I've been, after that day, I've been kind of remembering, like reminding, like being, being, like reminding myself, oh, you don't have to fight with this. You don't have to wrestle with this in your mind. You don't have to think too much. You have this option to trust. We always have the option to trust. And trust is like, it takes the edge off of all this stuff. The uncertainty, what is uncer what's the, the uncertainty is more like a creation of our mind. It's not even a real thing. There is certainty. There is certainty in our life unfoldment. There is certainty in the fact that we are souls temporarily incarnate in this sort of physical vessel and that we don't come alone. We come with guides. There is a, a universal sort of flow that we can lean into more and more and more, giving, giving us way more peace and happiness and joy, even in these transitional times. And, you know, that's just one story I have from recently. I have so many stories I was like debating on which one to tell to kind of hammer in this point, but I don't think I need to because I guarantee you have your own stories. How many, how many times has the universe showed you it's not only safe, but wise to trust it? I guarantee you've had your own personal reflections, your own personal experiences, your own reference experiences, just showing you time and time again, it's okay to trust. So just remember, my friend, going forward into this month of the unknown, that you can, if you choose at any moment, trust. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to figure it out. The clarity you get around this 
the breakthroughs you get around this and the times you need this will come naturally when they need to. You don't, it's never going to be a result of you doing something or after, after an hour of journaling and contemplation, I finally figured out my pain. No, it's, it's going to just happen spontaneously anyways. You could, you could fight the whole time and it's still going to happen spontaneously. Or you could chill out and enjoy time with family, enjoy the peaceful quiet, the solitude if you need to take it, maybe going into nature, maybe reading a good book around the fire, whatever. You can like chill the F out and, and, and relax and get, get all this. You get to get all this anyways. It's a new way of going through life. We have to remind ourselves we can trust. And I know maybe trust, your trust has probably been broken throughout life. Through your mom or dad or your society or the world you live in, you've experienced things in an imperfect way and that's nobody's fault. But maybe along the way, like me, you've lost trust in life. What I found is that there is like a higher power. There is like something else beyond me. You can call it God if you want. I don't really like to call it God personally, but there's something. There's like a, there's an intelligence. There's a divine intelligence that seems to have my best interests at heart, that seems to always be there when I really need it, that seems to have been nudging me forward my entire life. And why not trust it? That has never let me down. And I'm sure it's never let you down either. Even if life has, we can rely on that. Hope you enjoyed, my friend. Before I go, if you are going through this, the profound healing, if you are feeling stuck, I'm going to share something with you that could help you. It's a breathwork session, a guided somatic release breathwork session that is perfectly designed to help you go into these feelings and let them go in a very real, permanent way. Um, it's something I've, been, I've done countless times. I do them at my retreats. I do them during my coaching sessions. I do them for friends, challenges. I've done them with over 10,000 people and it's always surprisingly powerful to people. It's just breath work with music and my wife helps and it can literally change your life. It's changed my life and I'm going to give you a session of it for free. It's a guided session I made for you. I'll leave a link down below. It's right there at the top of the description box. Also, I'll leave a, a, a little comment pinned comment with from me uh, giving it to you all you have to do is put in your email address and it'll be sent right to you and you can do it as often as you like it's a somatic release breathwork ceremony my friends my gift to you happy holidays i'll see you next time much love